Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator, and I'm really, really excited to announce this. Um, we've all been trying to use AI for auto hockey and V2 for quite a while now, ever since ChatGPT 3 came out, right? Yeah. Um, and we all failed miserably. Is it like even with a lot of nudging, it didn't work? Well, last night I was watching a bunch of videos on the new version of Claude, which um, the model is called Sonnet. So make sure you're running that instance. And damn, it is putting out some good V2 code. Is there right. so much, let's talk and show a couple examples of what you've done in the, the test you did. So I just asked some very variable, um, simple questions to verify what information uh, it had and so on. And we asked it about auto hotkey. And yeah, last data is from April, 2024. Um, but when I gave it this prompt, and this is the simple prompt, just create a small program that asks for a folder, then loops through all the files and adds up their site and so on. And I made it in a very specific way because I wanted to trick it. There are a few things about asking for a folder that I wanted to kind of like push it in the wrong direction, actually. I was trying to make it harder for it. Um, and other things about the GUI, because the problem is GUIs are really annoying to build in V2 for people who don't know about it. And ChatGPT has been very bad at it. And it gave me code, and I'm just gonna simply copy that and paste it, right? So I'm just gonna come back here, paste that over and hit run. And there it goes, it asks me for a folder, which is part of what I asked. I give it a folder and it would go ahead and tell me what the total size of the folder is, what is the largest file and what that size is, how many files it found and what is the average file size. That was, I didn't ask it for the total files or the average size for this. It just came up with that, but I like working code, right? I like that okay button is. Yeah, so I, I told it, this is the funny thing. I told it like, um, try to make everything align by setting the same width for the text controls and edit fields. And it decided, oh yeah, the button too. <laughs> right, like that. Yeah. But now for me, it's just a, a matter of fixing one thing instead of 500 things, right? So it would be 75 here and that's it. Like. It was really, really cool. I, I was. That's it. Like, yeah. I got something working and now I got my button where I want it. It's really cool. Like I didn't have to go through, why is this not working? What is this doing? Now, Very close though. The clever part is about the size, the total size. Depending on the files that you choose, part of the code determines which unit to show up, show in there. So if I pick a folder that is that doesn't have much things in it, the size now is in kilobytes, you see that? So that's interesting. It came up with that. And as I mentioned, that was a copy paste. I didn't even watch the code. I just, I didn't even read the code. I copy paste it. Funny thing, I did the same thing with ChatGPT. So this is ChatGPT and it is um, basically, I copy pasted the prompt. It's exactly the same prompt. ChatGPT 4.40 has been updated more rapidly than Claude, as far as I can tell. It has more up to date information about AutoHotKey because Claude got that wrong. Told me that the latest version is 1.1 when it isn't. So supposedly 4.40 should be better at it. But as soon as it came here, it gave me the one code. This this all is crap. That's crap. That doesn't work. Um, and even if I tried to nudge it, like, hey, um, <laughs> I even berated it a little bit. Why does Cloud AI does a perfect job <laughs> when you <laughs> when yours is so bad? <laughs> it tried. It tried to fix it and still didn't work. So it it, it did give me, you know, like good. Uh, it, it tried but still created some annoying issues like the GUI class, you cannot actually assign it to itself. So this is bad code in V2. I didn't even have to worry about that in here. I don't know how it knows that it had to use something else and just use that. So we are really excited to see that there's at least one AI now that um, can 
create working out of hot QB2 code without such a hassle. Like when I do it with the other tools, I have to push it a lot. I have to actually tell it a lot of things, which goes into your talk uh, or your uh, the one the thing that you wanted to talk about, Joe. Like, hey, how can I approach ChatGPT in a way that gives me better results? Like, yeah. and it's one of the things I keep telling people. It, it's you know, we think of it as a program or a computer, but you really should be thinking about you're talking to another person, right? And also, because with other people, you realize, unless you have a big history together, and I'm using that word purposely, right? Because the same thing with ChatGPT and, and Claude and stuff. When they know your history, they understand context more. It gets weighted. But if you haven't done a bunch of stuff, you need to give it context to explain what your goal is, what you're trying to do, right? This and that. Also, think of it as, a, um, it's really like the game 20 questions, right? Instead of trying to think perfectly out in front, Get started and then adapt what you've done, you know, change your feedback to it as and have a conversation with it. Because if you just plan on that, you'll be far more happy with what you're doing, right? And getting results that you actually can use. And then the last tip has more to do with, um, you know, which we brought up during the hero call today of every time, no matter what it gives you back, like kind of say, hey, is that, you know, is that good enough? Like, can you do better? Can you optimize that? You know, because often it will do stuff and either, like with me, it did invent uh, a JSON parser function that didn't exist. Uh, yeah. So, say that doesn't exist. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, okay. And it, and it created it, right? But just make sure you, you understand it's a dialogue and that you give it context. And, you know, you can include libraries and tell it, use this library, right? That's fine. Right. Um, but yeah, make, make sure you don't expect wonders the other thing I would add is is I will bet you money ChatGPT is going to come out with another model soon that will suddenly start working with V2 code. Like, I think we're just, it's been a long, long time. Yeah. yeah, we've all, we started a year ago and it was like sucking and it's been getting closer and closer on all of them. And now suddenly Claude happened oh, to, to offer yeah. stuff. But I, I will bet you it won't take long before ChatGPT also and, and other tools as well, right? So I I am a little bit surprised by it. And 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 I made a question of it. You said, like, yeah, it has to be a different model. Because I, I, I'm still wondering how Claude with prior data, because it looked like they updated in April, has working B2 code, but ChatGPT, which is updated this month in June. But my point is something is going on in there, right? Because it's it's again to me, think about it more of IQ. The the Claude Sonnet version is probably smarter, even though it doesn't have more recent data. It's smarter. And when you say use V2, it, it actually says, Oh, now I, I know I, I don't want to use V1 code. That's that's wrong. Like I shouldn't be using that. Yeah, code. okay. Uh ChatGPT has access to V2, and you did a lot of stuff where you're shoving the document. <sighs> into it and it was still not given v2 code right right that's why also i think all the models we've seen one jumps out ahead and then they all kind of they keep doing this back and forth over and over right so i think very soon think the models will be you know offering us up some good code in v2. what you just what you just said is kind of very interesting because it might be there there might not be a one big generalized AI that will do best the best thing. It might be like, you want to deal with videos, this one tool will be great. You want to deal with this one thing, then do with, with this one other. Kind of like the different programming languages. So in this case, Arahat Kiwi 2 is better at some things compared to other languages. I use it for certain things. And this particular AI seems to be understanding it better than I think in my case, I'll have to use that one, you know? <laughs> Right, for now. So also, for now. <laughs> on the Claude, um, they have, when well, we actually, some of the Hero members tried accessing it, and they were in other countries, and they couldn't access it. Now, Isaiah's tried a, a while ago, and he couldn't access it, but today he could, which was interesting. Yeah. So, um, yes. I'm not sure how the other guy couldn't access it, but Isaiah's good, because Isaiah also is not in the U.S., but maybe they, they're, you know, letting certain countries on at a time. The, the other right. thing, that that sonnet model is available for free in Claude, but 
there's not a huge bandwidth per day, but you, you go through it pretty quick. I hit my limit pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. However, you can pay the $20 a month. And from what I read, that'll give you five times what the free level is, which still for 20 bucks, but that's not very much to me, right? Right, it's not. Right, right, right. I agree. We started working with, well, I, after I saw that and I read about the, um, the limit, even with the paid version, um, I started writing some code to use the ChatGPT API because that's a pay-as-you-go kind of thing, and you don't have to have the twenty dollars a month, and it's it's kind of unlimited, right? You just you keep doing as much as you want, and you get charged per call. So we'll be developing probably, or or we'll just wait a while until ChatGPT, because we have a class for working with um, ChatGPT, which needs a little love, but we're much further along than that. So maybe we'll wait for it, or maybe we'll have both. I did search around. I didn't find anybody with a class for working with Claude in the API. Um, so that was a bottom. Yeah. I started using yeah. Claude to write the code for doing API calls to access Claude. Um, <laughs> that was a good one. Good stuff. So, yeah, yeah I, I think it's uh, we're we're finally yeah. there. It's been a long time coming because we kept saying any day now. Um, I was telling Isaiah yesterday. I said I was I went to, I was watching because I watch a lot of videos in AI. And there was one on a, I forget the topic, but it was like six months old. And I told him, I'm like, I can't watch that. It's out of date. You know what I'm like? Yeah, six, exactly. <laughs> six months ago is already like, it's not relevant anymore. Like that's how fast this area is growing. Right. That's right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please like the video. If you learned something here, go give thought a try. If you want to be using AI right now, we, we've had really great experience right below. If you agree, if you tried it and had problems recently, um, since the sonnet model or not. But thank you. Cheers. Bye.